Welcome Life Church. Come on, let's stand together and worship the Lord today. Come on, put your hands together. We 
breaking silence, you are my God alone. Time to stand on your word with passion, heaven's our home. Oh, and I can't stop it, you pray. no shadow that is ever overcome your life there is no rival that could ever stand against your might you've always been with us every battle you've already won no we've already won
there is no weapon that is ever left a mark on you. There is no army with the power to conquer truth. You've always been with us. Every battle you've already won, no, we've already.
on, lift up the name of Jesus. Great is his name. Hallelujah. 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 Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. Verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. When he says it, it's a done deal. If it's in the book, it's a done deal. If God said it, it's a done deal. In the gap between the promise and the fulfillment of the promise is the tension where God draws us to follow him by faith. The commodity of heaven is faith. The commodity of heaven is faith. You can do nothing in the kingdom without faith, but with faith, all things are possible. Come on. Come on. Come on. (laughs) <laughs> you're not a haphazard random thought you're, you, you've been designed with purpose and we, you've been designed uh, on purpose, on time for such a time as this because God said it <laughs> say God said God say it one more time say God said. God said when God says it, it's a done deal say it together with me, one, two, three when God said it, it's a done deal amen Amen. <laughs> you know, sometimes we just have to tell our situation. Uh, uh, you know, situation, God said. <laughs> uh, um, checkbook, God said. Um, God said. God, situa- need, I, God said. You hold on to the promises of God. Amen? Amen. Why don't you fist bump somebody next to you? Tell them they look good at church today. Smile real big at them. Well, it's good to have Pastor Lisa and her family back from their COVID adventure, quarantine. Everyone's healthy and strong. It's good to have you here today. I love you. I'm so glad you're here to worship with us. If you're new and I haven't met you before, uh, uh, my name's Tim and I'm the pastor. Maybe you're watching online today and uh, you just kind of tuned in to our worship service. Hey, welcome. We're excited you came on to worship with us. If you're watching Facebook Live, hey, let us know you're there. Type something in. Give us a shout out. We are glad that you're here. Maybe you're watching our YouTube channel. We're so glad that you're here. And if you're a guest with us, maybe you're watching online as a guest. Uh, Maybe you're in the room as a guest. And we want you to know that we love you and uh, we appreciate you. And we, like, planned on you being here. And so we don't think it's an accident that you're here. It's by divine uh, intention that God set you here. And so, hey, welcome and we love you. And and we're going to invite you to reach for the seat back in front of you and grab a connection card real quick and take a few moments to fill that out. Uh, If you're a guest, you can put your name and check the box that says first time guest. If you're here for the second time, you can indicate that as well. And there's a place for a third time guest. After three, we should say regular attender. And on the back of the card, there's a place for prayer requests. This is super important because we want to be praying with you. And really the only way we'll know how to pray for you is if you let us know, right? So if you'll write it down, we will pray for you this week. If you'd rather keep it kind of confidential, maybe, with just the pastoral team, you can indicate that. But we'll be praying for you this Wednesday night right here at 645 in the room, and you're invited to be part of that. We hope that you will uh, be there. At the end of the service, guests, a couple things. Um, as you leave, you'll notice there's the welcome table to your left. As you head out, we've got a gift for you. Maybe you've been a couple times and never stopped by the table to get your gift. We'd love to give you something just as a uh, way of saying we appreciate you and we love you and we're glad that you're here. Stop by and see our welcome team on the left as you exit to the lobby today. And take your connection card and just drop it in the, uh, in the bag with the ushers and they'll receive those. And that's also the time of the service that we receive um, our offering. We're going to do that uh, uh, um, at the end too. So know this, that if you're a guest, there's no expectation for you to give. Of course, you're welcome to be part of that. And you can check out uh, the screen. If you're at home, you can look on the ways to give digitally. It's on the screen behind me as well, and you can take part in that today. And I I just want to say this about the offering today. This is a special 
special offering. As a matter of fact, Frank, could you hand me that, uh, that booklet? Today, um, we are setting aside 100% of the general tithe and offering that are going to go towards missions. 100% today. So, um, yeah, that's something. That's something. So here's the deal. Our leadership, core leadership team met, and they said, you know what? We feel like this is so significant. We want to kind of sort of put our money where our mouth is, and we want to designate a whole week's worth of offering towards missions. So know that today as you give, you're giving towards global impact of the gospel. You're giving towards taking the gospel around the corner and overseas today. So 100%. Uh, so what I want you to do is just empty your wallet. <laughs> I want you to think about uh, something significant today that you can give 100% of what we receive of undesignated gifts is going towards our, our um, missions um, campaign. Is there anybody in the room that does not have one of these right now? I know we had them last week. If you don't have one with you, we got some guys who are going to jump up real quick. Just wave at us. We want to put one in your hand. You don't have one. They're going to run real quick and give you one. We want you to have one. Even if you got one last week, we want you to have another one. We're going to talk about those today as well. Hey, um, as we're passing those out, tonight at 5 o'clock, we're going to host a, a little party here. We're calling it <clears throat> Supper Bowl Party. So I was really disappointed this year that Alabama did not make it to the Super Bowl. And... Um, so I, uh, but there's still a game apparently, but I just want to hang out with you. The, the, the church will, thank you, thank you. The church will provide drinks and cups, plates, and I could bring some food and we'll have tables set up and, and we'll, watch, we'll have some tables in the back and you can play games. Maybe you could care less about any football game. Come bring your board games. We're going to have a lot of fun. Five o'clock today, we'll be hanging out. You don't want to miss that. You want to be part of that. And so we hope that you will take time out of your schedule to be with that. Also, um, oh, that's it. That's it. Oh, one more thing. On the back, you'll notice we've got our life group tables set up. So we're launching those next Sunday. So just know that um, we have those available. There's groups for everybody. We want you to check those out on the website, on the app, tables here. Be part of a group. We'll talk about that a little more next week. We want you to be part of a group. Today, we are privilege to have with us one of our national leaders uh, to, to be with us today in our service. Um, Rick Allen has, um, we hung out probably for four and a half hours. I, I hardly let him go to bed. I just wanted to hear from him. Um, if, if you just want to hear some stories, you just got to hang out with this guy. Um, he's, he's our national men's director. Also, he oversees um, a, a, an arm of our um, of men's missions called Light for the Lost, and, and he travels all over the globe helping connect um, opportunity with resource. And he challenges men to grow in their faith, and it's an honor to have Rick with us. This morning, he's going to come. He's going to bring a challenging word. I've said, listen, brother, we're yours. We're, we can take it, whatever you got, man. We want everything that you have for us. It really is an honor to have with us uh, our guest speaker. Would you let him know, Rick Allen, as he comes, and let him know how much you appreciate him. At least I need his mic. There you go, brother. Thank, Thank you, you, Pastor. How are you doing this morning? It is an honor to... Hey, like that. Uh, I, it's an honor to be with you today. I would rather be here than the best funeral home in town, right? Hey, do me a favor. Look at the people sitting in front of you. Look at the people sitting on both sides of you. Turn your head and look at the person behind you. Now look at someone and say, you know what? I've checked out this audience. I am the best looking thing here. <laughs> it is a joy to be with you. For those of you who are online, thank you for joining us today. I believe today is a very special day. I had the joy of pastoring for many years. I used to tell our congregation, one of three things will happen every Sunday, and you determine what happens. 
You're either going to have a discovery Sunday where something's going to hit and you're going to discover a truth, a a revelation of God. You're going to have a decision Sunday where you're going to have to make a decision on what you're going to do with your life and what the purpose of your life will be. And then there are Destiny Sundays. Now, Destiny Sundays, you usually have two to six a year. And you determine the Destiny Sunday. You determine it by your participation in worship. You determine it by understanding what the focus and the objective of the day is and whether or not you will participate in it. And you determine what the Sunday will be by the way you've interceded during the week for what God could do in this church today. We used to have a group of people who would pray every day for our church. They would always pray at 10 o'clock in the morning or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And this group of people, wherever they were, they would just pray. And they would pray for certain things. Number one, they would pray that a miracle would happen. So unbelievers could believe. Number two, they prayed that believers would decide to serve. There's nothing worse than going to the party and not being part of the party. Number three, they would pray that the Holy Spirit would have his way in our service. Number four, that whatever happened, I'm jumping in the middle of it. So I used to tell men, guys, I need you to do three things on Sunday. Men, you have to understand that when our guests come into the building, they are going to listen to the platform. They're going to watch the seats, and they're going to do what they see, not what they hear. So number one, bring your Bible. Now, I don't, bring it. I, if you've got to push the dust off of it, fine. If you want to bring a doodle pad in the back of it, that's cool. But bring your Bible, or at least turn it on when I say the Scripture. Because people are watching, and if the men are not engaged in the truth of the gospel, our guests know that our families do not really believe what I'm saying. Number two. If you're sitting by your wife, emphasis, your wife, put your arm around her. Act like you love her. All of a sudden, everybody went. (laughs) Now, it isn't a marriage retreat, so don't start kissing on her yet. But uh, let, let our guests know we love our family. This is Valentine weekend. I hope my wife's not watching because I forgot to buy the Valentine card. So at 8 o'clock this morning, I'm at Target reading cards. But I will not be in trouble tomorrow when I get home or tonight. I'll be, I'll put, act like you love her. And number three, when we worship, occasionally, occasionally, raise a hand in the air. Act like you got a scratch. Do something. Make it look like you're worshiping. Fake the word. Sing Bonanza. I don't care. Just make people think you love Jesus. Now, don't bring out a hanky. But those three simple things, when our church exploded, more people told us it was because of the atmosphere of the pews, not the content of the pulpit. When the core leadership buys in and understands that we're here as influencing tools and resources for those who are trying to discover Christ, make a decision for Christ, or finding a destiny Sunday in Christ, then I need to get all in. So, thank you, Pastor, Pastor Jamie, for the opportunity to be here. Pastor Tim shared with you, I'm the National Men's Director in, uh, for the United States, and we also help, we're in 39 countries of the world with our discipleship resources that are all free of charge on our website and app. I also do Life for the Lost, which is the evangelistic resource arm of, the, of missions of the Assembly of God. We do about 9 to $10 million a year in helping with evangelism resources for all of our missionaries around the world. 
and it's a joy to do that. Now, if you were raised in church, raise your hand. If you were raised in church, come on, raise your hand. Okay. Now, let me find out if you really were raised in church. If you were raised in church, were you raised in a church where there were more tambourine players than people? And the person who played the tambourine the loudest couldn't play it on key, couldn't play it on time. It was just, you just want to go back there and just, you know, sometimes the spirit of slap comes on somebody. I wasn't raised in church. If you weren't raised in church, raise your hand. This is my tribe right here. My mother is from Madrid, Spain. My dad is from Memphis, Tennessee. My dad forged his great grand, his grandmother's signature so he could join the Marines at 15 because he wanted to run away because my grandmother, his mother, put him in an orphanage and said God told her to do that. So dad had a God complex all his life. Mom, on the other hand, lost her parents when she was young and ended up turning into a very dangerous art and ran all over Europe and met my dad and my mom saw my dad as a, as a ticket out of Europe to come to the States, so they got married. My dad knew no Spanish. My mom knew no English when they got married. That's fun. All my life, I was, we, were, we were Catholic. We were CEO Catholics. You know what that is, Christmas, Easter only. That's when we went to Mass. I'm sitting in a bar on a Saturday night when I'm 19 years old with two roommates. My parents are living in Washington, D.C. I'm living in North Little Rock, Arkansas. My roommate looks at me and says, you know, we're crazy, Rick. We're just crazy. I said, why is that? He said, because we're here spending our money trying to pick up a woman when we can go to church and pick up a woman for I love you. And I said, then let's go to church. And I came to church on a Sunday morning and sat near the back. Back then, I was so skinny, only had one stripe in my pajamas. I was a drug addict. I'm 120 pounds, sopping wet. I've got a ponytail, and it goes all the way down to my waist. When I walked in that church of a 1,000, those 1,000 Pentecostals looked at me and went, hmm, fresh meat. I walked in the sanctuary, and all of a sudden, they started singing. Now, listen, some of you old-timers that were raised in church, look, don't fuss at these young people singing all these choruses, because when I started going to church, you all sang, he set me free for 45 minutes. I'll fly away. Everyone will be happy over there. That's true, because there's nobody happy here, because no one's shouting. And all of a sudden, out of clear blue, all these people jumped up and ran for the wall, and they started walking in a big circle around the church. Anybody know what I'm talking about? What am I talking about? Jericho March. For you young people, thank God you never saw it. And so uh, they started going, and, and there was an elderly man behind me. And I turned to him and said, sir, excuse me, what are they doing in here? And he goes, oh, man, in the Bible. And I learned later that when you start with in the Bible, it means you don't know what you're talking about. In the Bible, the children of Israel walked around the walls of Jericho seven times, and the walls came tumbling down. Huh? And I turned back around, and I was trying to figure out who jumped up first and what's the count. Because I'm out at six because I got drugs in the car. I cannot be caught with these walls coming down at six. So I turned back around and I said, sir, do you know what the count is? And he goes, no, nah, don't worry about it. The walls don't come down anymore. And I said, then why are they walking in the circle? He goes, I don't have a clue. Every six, seven weeks they jump up and do this. Don't worry about it. Give it 10 minutes. It'll be done. And that was my introduction to Pentecost. It fascinated me. It fascinated me that people could connect to an unknown God in a way like that. Now, this is our mission Sunday. And I do not want to discount from that. But here's the truth of the matter. Each one of us in this sanctuary, we each have a story to tell. 
Everyone has a story. And most people believe their story's not good enough. So they don't tell it. And because they don't tell it, they don't connect to the mission, destiny of their own life. I went for six months to church. Went about once a week. Didn't tell anybody I was going. Just wanted to see what else they would do. They danced on pianos. They, they ran into walls. When the power of God would fall, my pastor would put prayer people in the bathroom because there's two sanctuaries in every, bath, in every church. This is the Christian sanctuary. The bathrooms are the sinner sanctuary. And when the Holy Ghost starts moving, when the power of God starts moving to your church, all your sinners run for their sanctuary. And so my pastor would put prayer people in the bathroom. And they would pray in the spirit in the bathroom. And can I tell you, you can't do what you got to do in a bathroom when someone's speaking in tongues. And I was raised in that. So Wednesday afternoon, we are in revival week. A friend of mine by the name of Steve is with me. I'm going up to our work, my workplace, which is about six miles from the church. We're going to pick some stuff up, go back to the church, and get ready for church that night. And I was a mechanic by trade. And uh, we get to a four-way stop in a residential area, 30-mile-an-hour speed limit, and this 1969 Z28 Camaro pulls up next to me, 350 quad. I look at that car, and I'm sitting in a 1972 baby blue, black racing truck, Ford. Pinto. What are y'all laughing at? Hey! But we had taken out that little four-cylinder 2,000cc engine, and we had dropped a 351 Cleveland into that car. We had to cut the inside fender wells out, had to put weight in it to keep it on the ground. And I said, and they pulled up next to me, and they went, boom! I had dropped down hitters, and I went, mm. And they went, boom! I went, mm. and I said, if they do it one more time, we race it. And they went, mm. and I hit that drop-down header, and my headers dropped, and I went, boom, and I was gone. I'm flying through that residential area about 110, 120 miles an hour, topped the little hill. When I topped the hill from here to that back wall, I sat a Buick, Electra 225, a deuce and a quarter, and I hit it at about 110, 120 miles an hour. Never touched the brakes. My car exploded. I wake up that late that night, and I have no clue. The next morning I wake up on Thursday morning. I have a portable halo around my neck. And I'm laying in the Baptist Medical Center in Little Rock, and I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. You ever had one of those deals where you can't figure out where you're at? And in my peripheral vision, I saw a man in the other bed. I said, hey, where am I? And the man in the other bed sat up on the side of his bed and looked at me, pointed right at me, and said, boy, are you safe? And he reached up and grabbed the curtain, and he closed it. And I said, hey, I want to talk to you. I've been going to church. I've learned the fast songs. I've learned the slow songs. I know page 254 is everyone will be happy. 255, I'll fly away. 263, he sets me free. Let me in. And he wouldn't talk to me. Hit the nurse's button. Called her in. She said, what's wrong? I said, I'll never be a Christian because of that man in that bed. And she looked at me strange, and she pulled the, the mirror out of the tray, pulled the curtain back, put the mirror up, and when I looked in that mirror, that bed was perfectly made. There was no one in that bed. Don't do that to a drug addict. You'll mess them up. The next day, my doctor came in on Friday, and I'm leaving parts of the story out. On Friday, I asked if I could go to church. It's the last night of church. And he said, yeah, you can go to church if you can walk to the end of the hallway and back. And then you got to be back by 10 o'clock because that's when the nurse shift is. And I need to be back by 10 o'clock because they pass out jello. And my mission for the day on that Friday was two things, get saved 
get jello. That was it. Bad order. Get saved, get jello. So I had someone come and pick me up from the hospital, took me to church. I was sitting on the third row right where this gentleman in the yellow sweater is. And I, they sang that night. And they sang. And they sang. And the, do you all know what I'm talking about? When they sang. And they sang. And they sang. And they sang some more. Sang. Oh, dear Lord. They just sang. And I'm like, I just want to get saved so I can get back and get my jello. Don't mess my jello up. Preacher preached. I don't know what he said. We had a communion table right down here. And at the altar call, I realized I can't be the first one down here because this is a raggedy and ch praying church. That means when they pray for you, they, you, they grab you by your head and they shake you like a raggedy and doll. My C3 and 4 vertebrae is all messed up. I got this portable halo on, and I'm thinking, dear God, I go down there first. They'll shake me, kill me. I'll be dead second, seven seconds after salvation. You'd be standing before Jesus going, living for you was the toughest seven seconds of my life. And you'll say, you think it was rough on you? Look at me. So I waited to be second. All of a sudden, a little Mexican boy came down, knelt down, white T-shirt, blue jeans, Chuck Converse tennis shoes, knelt down at the prayer table, at the communion table, and I beelined it down. That night, I found out Pentecostal people don't know how to pray for you. They know how to pray at you. They told me to stand up, sit down, kneel, bark at the moon like a dog. And all of a sudden, a little lady came up by the name of Mary Lewis, came up and said, Rick, has anybody prayed sinner's prayer with you? I said, no, ma'am. She, she said, let's pray the sinner's prayer. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. Ho, 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 yes, I am. And we go through the whole sinner's prayer, and we get to the end, and at the end, we always say, in the name of Jesus. And so she said, in the name of Jesus. And when I said, in the name of Jesus, Pow! I just needed to wake you up. Some of y'all were going to sleep on me. I went, pow! And I jumped up, and I thought, dear God, I've been... I have been shot in the middle of my sinner's prayer. The people I owe drug money to have shot me in my sinner's prayer, and that's not right. And I jumped up and turned back and looked at the back doors, and there was no one at the back doors. And then this electric sensation just came all over me. From and I am a Catholic. I am a drug addict Catholic. And all of a sudden, it just, it just permeates my body. It just puts shivers in, my, in, in me. And I realize that the pal that I heard is that Jesus has healed my neck. Now, let me help you here. As our guests come to church every Sunday, and they hear things like that, and, our con and we as the congregation go, oh, wow, that's cool. Hey, you got a resurrection story? Haven't had one of those. Our guest, because of our responses, they don't believe we believe in resurrection power. I used to tell my church, when anybody tells something supernatural, you gotta clap. You gotta let people know. I mean, this is this is the God we serve. And that power went, and I was jumping up, and I could feel my neck was healed, and I was trying to pull the brace off. And when I opened my mouth to someone I was, that my neck was healed, I was speaking in tongues. Let's try that one more time. Thank you. And so I'm saved, healed, filled, and delivered. I have not used another drug, never, used an, never drank, don't cuss. And from that moment on, the desire was gone. And my pastor was an elderly man, about 75 years old. And he was walking in the altars, and he was headed that way. And I said, Brother Johnson, thank you so much for putting up with me for six months. He goes, well, just try to be at church Sunday. I'll try. I'll try. And I go, Brother Johnson, one more thing. Where's that boy that was in the altar? He goes, you're the only one in the altars tonight, Rick. I said, no, sir, that's not right. Don't do that to me. That happened yesterday. I said, Brother Johnson, there was a little Mexican boy, about 10 years old. Looked like he had a Tupperware bowl cut. He had on 
white T-shirt, blue jeans, and he looked at me and said, did he have on Chuck Converse tennis shoes? I said, yes, sir, he did. He said, sit down. I thought, man, I'm in trouble. Sat down, he walked over to me and said, Rick, six years ago I came to church on a Sunday morning. Went to unlock the church, and there was a tug on my jacket. Turn around, it's a little Mexican boy, white T-shirt, blue jeans, Chuck Converse tennis shoes. He said, Mr., can anybody come to this church? I said, yeah, if you want, I'll come and pick you up. He said, I reached to grab the doorknob to open the last little boy to come in, and when I turned around, he's gone. I can't find him in the parking lot, can't see down the street. He's gone. He's vanished in the thin air. He said, I'm disappointed, and I walk into, this, into the lobby of the church, and the Holy Spirit says, Doyle, you've just seen an angel. There will be a day where a young man will see the same angel you've seen. Anoint him. He has a powerful work to move on. And back then we had the big bottle of oils. You all know what I'm talking about? Not these little thing economy sizes that you put in your pocket. I'm talking about it's hard to put that in the pocket in a prayer line. When you got someone with a bottle of oil with this in your pocket, run. And he went over and got that bottle of oil, and he dumped that bottle of oil all over me, and he prophesied over me that I would be, my ministry would go around the world, that I would help people in every country find the gospel, that I would be able to connect with people, that I would be able to do things that were impossible, that God would use me to, for miraculous healings, that God would use me to see things happen that no one's seen. And that it's all come to pass. Now, I say that, you say, but this is our mission service. Here's the deal. Many of us today are going to do something sizable financially. Two or three of you just need to go stand in the offering bucket. And say, God, I don't have a lot to give, but I won't give me. Don't give me. I didn't know there was an Old Testament. I didn't know there was a New Testament. I didn't know letters in red meant Jesus. You couldn't, I didn't know the gospel. I knew nothing about nothing when I got saved. If God can do it for me, he's no respecter of persons. What can God do? Here's the simple question. Is today your destiny? Is it today? In Matthew 28, there's a very interesting scripture. It's called the Great Commission. And it says that Jesus takes the 11 up on the hill, the mountain of ascension. And the scripture says that they bowed down and worshiped him, but some doubted. That has always intrigued me. Eleven, it says they all bowed down and worshipped him. So that means they got down. You're in Hebrew worship, you got down on your knees, you put your forehead towards their feet, and you put your, your forehead on the dirt if you can't put them on the feet of the master. And all eleven are circling Christ, and this is what they're doing. They're all bowed down. They're worshipping him because of what he has shown them he can do. But he they... Some are doubting, which means between three and seven, are doubting what he's about to tell them they're going to do. Now, Jesus has a dilemma here. Some of the guys are doubting. Some of the guys are all in. What do you say? Here's what Jesus decides. I will not argue with the doubters. I'm going to commission the committed. Let me say it again. I am not going to argue with doubters. I am going to commission the committed. I am going to get the inside circle, and I'm going to commit them, and the fringes that right now who are going through emotional struggle, they will buy in because of the leadership. Because I'll be gone. And he says, go into all the world, preach the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Make disciples 
Observe what I taught you, and remember, remember, I will be with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Now, that statement goes all the way back to Matthew 16. See, now, in Matthew 16, Jesus has just finished baptizing, or they've just finished baptizing up in the Caesarea area. And Jesus decides he's going to take 12 disciples on a little journey, a 26-mile walk. And he's going to take them on this 26-mile walk up to Caesarea Philippi, the most evil place he will take the disciples will be Caesarea Philippi. It is in the northeast quadrant of Israel. This is where they are worshiping 32 unknown gods. This is where there's human sacrifice. This is where everything satanic is happening. Demonic activities are happening. And Jesus takes them up on this 26-mile walk. And when he gets them to Caesarea Philippi, he looks at them and says, Hey, guys, let me ask you something. Who do those people say I am? Well, some say you're Moses, Elijah, some say you're a prophet. And then Jesus drops the hammer. He drops the missional hammer. He says, yeah, but the real question I want to ask you is who do you say I am? And in the midst of satanic activity, where there's, if you've ever been there, there's actually in a, a, a big stone area bigger than this wall. They have two holes, and they called them the, the gates of hell. And they would throw people into that, into that abyss. He's somewhere around there. Peter says, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. So when he tells them at Matthew 28, hey, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Those 11 guys remember that the first time he asked them that they were standing at the gates of hell. Our mission is predicated not on what we do in the safety of our biblical community. Our mission is predicated on how we attack the gates of hell as a community. My father, as I shared at the beginning, do you remember when Neil Armstrong touched the moon? How many remember that? I'm 13 years old. Okay, I'm 65. I'm 13. JFK gives a speech twice, and he says, we we got to go to the moon before the end of the decade, and we're going to build stuff that no man's ever seen, and we got to do it. We got to do it first because we got we got to win. And on July 20th, 1969, this little 13-year-old boy, my dad puts me down in front of a TV the size of a casket. Hello, do I have a witness in this thing? It's got a record player in it. It's got a radio in it. It's I mean, this thing is huge. It's a, It's you guys have no, it, it, oh, dear God, it's as big as that screen. I mean, it's monstrous. It's, it's just, mon and, it's, and it's, it's huge, and it's got a 13-inch TV in it. And we all huddled around it. If you're under 40, raise your hand. I don't like you. No, you, you got it so easy. You got, you got a thousand show, you got stuff on this thing here. You got a, t a television, television, television. You got a TV, you got a phone, you got a phone. Our phone, my first phone, two longs and a short. Who knows what I'm talking about? Come on, if I, that we had a party line. And when, you, if it rang, ring, 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 that's your house. If it went ring, 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 that's not your house. It didn't matter how it rang, we all gonna pick up and listen. got satellite radio, you got 200 channels. When we were growing up, there was three channels, ABC, NBC, and that's all we had. Then they told us we were going to get a fourth channel. I was so excited. 
comes out PBS and it's puppets. I don't need puppets. Mm. I remember when my parents used to stick me in the rear, the rear window of the car and drive down the freeway at 75 miles an hour. Anybody got a witness? Air condition in our car was 260, two windows down, 60 miles an hour. That was our air conditioning system. We, listen, it was so bad when I was growing up, we only had AM. We didn't have no FM. We didn't have no satellite. We had AM. You know what AM stands for? Almost music. I sat there on July 20th, 1969. Watch that man hit the moon. My dad was elated. We talked about that. We thought that was so cool. Dad was in the military all his life. When I got saved, he would always ask me, when are you going to get a real job? When I got called in the ministry, when are you going to quit doing that preaching stuff and go out and do something? I uh, became a missionary and served the school systems of the United States with youth alive. And one of the books that we had was called The Book of Hope. My dad, I gave my dad a book of hope, and he said, how much do I owe you? I said, Dad, people are in services at their churches and they owe you $15, so can you buy them? My dad passed away of COVID, 92, almost a year. In the very beginning stages of COVID, dad was in California. He was exiled from his family in Mexico because he was sick and he died alone. But on December, but on August 27th, many years ago, my dad wrote me an email after he read the Book of Hope one night in his office after my mom went to bed. I want to share with you what he said. I haven't heard from you in a few days. I hope everything's going good. I've been reading the Book of Hope. It's very nice. Every teenager should have a copy to read. Put together with a lot of work, but an easy read. I think the dictionary and the Waters Book of Hope section is well done. Maybe the Waters Book of Hope section should be used in your presentations at your meetings. It's going to take me a while to read all of it. The only thing I don't like is the coloring. In some places, it's hard for an old man to read the words. The words and the colors blend together too well. Good job in putting it together. Then my father will write eight words. That will change my life. This was my destiny email. My father writes, put in an orphanage. Old God told her, my, his mother to put him in the orphanage. Runs all his life, marries a woman he can't talk to, always trying to find out. And he writes this. I hope to meet this man one day. And every dime that you're going to invest today Glad you did 13 seconds after you get the crap. Every dollar you invest today is because someone, somewhere in the world is going, I hope to meet that man one day. And your resources, your God spirit, is going to help that happen. We go almost two years to the month. Dad and I are talking on the phone. We talk at night because we don't want mom to know. August 3rd, of the two years, he writes me this. I received your email. This computer's two steps from the window. Here's what's happened. My dad is in his 80s. The computer is saying it needs to reboot. And my dad is mad at me because he can't find the shoes in the closet. True story. He said, I'm snowed under. But thank God that now I'm a Christian. 
or the wall would be dark red. Call my dad. Dad, what are you talking about? Well, son, in that book, it says if you want to receive Christ, you just pray the sinner's prayer. And you're a born again believer. So, son, I got down on my knees in my office. I took that book and I read it verbatim. And, son, when I got to the end of it, and it said, In the name of Jesus. Did something really happen? I said, well, did you hear a gunshot? Because that's how it started with me. I've been in China. I've been in Africa. I've been in Europe. I've been in Asia. I've been all over the world. But it doesn't matter if it's across the street if it's the community around the right-hand turn of our church or whether it's the community at the right-hand turn in downtown Hong Kong. The soul means the same. The destiny moment means the same. For them, it's their discovery weekend when you make it available. This church has a rich history with missions. You say, well, there's not a lot of us in here. Shh, if everybody does something, God does a lot. And we're about to receive our faith promises for 2022. It is this little card that you have right here. You have your plan. If you have your card, please hold it up with me right now. If you don't, our ushers will bring you a faith promise. If you need a faith promise card, we're going to ask you to raise your hand, please. If you need a faith promise card. There's pins in the chair in front of you. It is 11, 11 a.m. A faith promise is not a contract. A faith promise just says, if God gives it to me, God can run it through me. And what it says is that, God, if you, if you give me the opportunity to be a conduit of your blessings and your glory and to be able to reach unchurched people in our neighborhood, our outreaches, with our mission teams, with our missions trips, with our missionaries, with you can help us, if you can help me be part of that, I want to be a part of that. Because that makes the difference. And there's people just like me who are waiting for people just like you to give me an opportunity to have a destiny Sunday where I, or a destiny day where I can give my life to Christ. You know, I've never had, I've never written out a faith promise, Pastor, where the Holy Spirit went, ooh, that's too much, mark it down. But this is what I do know. When I pastor, I used to tell our people, God will rarely ask you to give what you don't have, but he will frequently ask you to give what you want to keep. To me, a faith promise is like communion. Because we are allowing people to find the love of Christ in the body of Christ to heal and deliver, to save and commission, young or old. So I want you to look at your faith promise, and I want us to take 60 seconds and just let the Holy Spirit speak to us. What what we will do weekly or monthly, if you just want to write down, here's what I'm going to do for the year. Just write it down. Today, I'm believing for our faith promises online. And by the way, they should be putting up a website on the screen for me. If you're online and you're wanting to do a faith promise today with our church, and thank you so much for staying with us through the entirety of the service. We know you had a choice of where you wanted to go, and you chose to stay with us. 
I want to ask you for you to take this email address and to write your name. Just put faith promise in the subject. And then in the context box, just write your name and your information and what you would like to do for faith promises for missions at Life Church in 2022. And I would be deeply appreciative that you would do that. Thank you so very, very much. I, I just pray that God will bless you in your home or if you're in the hospital or if you're at work or wherever you're at that God will speak to your heart too and you can join us in faith promises. But today we are believing for $100,000 plus in faith promises. So we can go on the missions trip. And so we can take care of our neighborhood evangelistic outreaches. So we can help our missionaries. I used to pastor and I used to say please on these Sundays do everything you can. If I come back again, I feel like I'm begging. And they would always step up. And you look just like my congregation. We also are going to ask you to make a cash gift today. So if you have your credit card, or you want to do text to give, or you want to do it online, or if you want to write a check, Make it out to Life Church, and as Pastor said, 100% of today's offering is going to go. We're believing for $25,000 in cash and over $100,000 in faith. And if you will agree with me in spiritual agreement, that that's what we're going to pray for. I want you to just hold your faith promise up in the air. And just say, Rick, you know what? I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do all I can, and if God speaks for me to do more, I will do more. Hold it up in the air. If you're with your spouse, I want you to hold hands. Hold it together. Husbands and wives, let's do it together. Let me bless you. Heavenly Father, I bless this congregation now with divine protection and supernatural anointing. I ask, Lord, that you would give them favor, that you would give them provision and protection, that you would bless their home and their children and their family, even to the fourth generation, that you would allow them if they own a business, that it will prosper abundantly this year. And if they are in employment, that they will find favor with their employer. I ask that you would allow our seed of faith to take increase and harvest and bring souls to the kingdom. I ask you, Lord, that if we take a faith promise on our business this year, that we write our business faith promise down, that, God, you would do something supernatural in that business. Lord, we are so thankful that you guard our hearts and our minds. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. The last thing I want to share with you before pastor comes back is that I used to share with my congregations, for some reason your church reminds me so much of the church that we pastor. I used to tell them, as a missionary, Missionaries would always say, don't pray for my need. Pray for God's favor. Because if I can have God's favor, my needs will be taken care of. And so I'm going to ask you this year to pray for the favor of the missions teams and the mission outreaches of Life Church. Pray God's favor on it. I believe that 2022 is the year of accelerated abundance. I don't know how it's going to work, but that's what God's been speaking to me. Accelerated abundance, accelerated abundance. And as pastor comes back to receive our tithe and offering, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for letting me share my story. And remember, there's a whole lot of kids just like me who God wants to call into places like this, and by your gift, it happened. God bless you for today. Pastor. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate oh, you. you. you yeah. Thank you, brother. One reason why we make these booklets is so that you can know the missionaries that we've committed to uh, for the calendar year. Um, so we start here. And so I, I will ask that you would um, commit to praying for these ministries and ministers, these, these missionaries. You met one last week, Jay Bonner, who is and his wife are missionary to um, foster kids in our communities and we're partnering with them.
about souls. Amen? It's about souls. Sometimes I ask myself the question, Lord, why, why have you given me what you've given me? You ever sit around? Now, there's always a thousand things that you want or you feel like you need you don't have. But don't go down those rabbit holes, right? Be thankful for what you do. And God, why do you? And I, every time I just can't get away from um, the reality that we are a blessed people. And, and, and uh, the word says life is but a vapor, a vapor, a vapor. Here today, gone tomorrow. We, we, get, we, get a, we, get a, we get a window of opportunity in this lifetime, a window of opportunity. I want to make the most of my opportunity. As a pastor, I want to lead you to make the most of your opportunity. And one way that we do that is have an opportunity to be, to, to go and to send, to go and to send, to go and and to sin. And so we're, we're going on some missions trips. We're planning, <laughs> right? We're planning on outreaches to this community. We're planning on big days in the church to invite people. We're, we're, we're going and we're sending. We're sending people to places that we'll never be able to go to. Places we'll never be able to go to. And that's why we do this. That's why we do this. Once a year, we sit in our hearts and say, God, what would you have me to do? If you can run it through me, right? If you can run it through me, I'll be faithful. Our young people raised over $20,000 for Speed of Light last year. So proud of them. Our little boys and girls raised over $3,000 for, for missions last year. So proud of them. And collectively, all together, um, when you add all the uh, details up, this church... Uh, participated close to $100,000 of, of missions and, and outreach uh, um, monies. Over $100,000. That's because of your giving. That's because of your giving. That's because of your giving. Now that number doesn't make it onto the, the tithe and offering. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a des it's designated gifts. That's pretty amazing to be part of. So Rick's challenge us to step up and do something. We're going to close. We're going to land. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to have an opportunity for you to respond. Because I believe in services like this where God grabs the heart of men and women, young people, teenagers, and children, and says, I, I want you. I want you. I want you. I want you. And maybe you're here today, and you, you feel this direction, this calling, this leading like, God, I don't... I, I, I just feel like you're just drawing me to you. I, I, I think that maybe I'm supposed to give my life towards the cause of Christ. And I just, I'm here, God. I don't know what to do with it. I'm just here. And if that's you, we want to pray with you. Maybe you're here and you've got a business and you're like, God, I, I want my business to be pleasing to you. Maybe you're a young couple here today and you're like, God, uh, we're starting out here, but I want to build a, a family that has a legacy of godliness and an inheritance of righteousness. That's what I want. And, and we're standing with you in prayer. Maybe you're a young person, and you're kind of at a transition point in your life, and you're saying, God, I'm here. God, I'm here. I'm kind of not sure what I'm supposed to do, but God, I just, whatever you want, I'm here. Maybe, maybe you're, uh, you know, like me, and you're like, you know, 50 or plus, and you're like, God, I'm here, and God, I'm just here, and God, I want what you want, and so God, teach me how to hear your voice, even when it sounds a little uncomfortable, so I'll step out of the boat and do what you've asked me to do. Yes, so we're here. Thus saith the Lord, you have asked me to show you a sign. You have asked me to confirm in your heart that yes, I need you. I more than need you. I desire you to be with me. For you to walk with me. You have cried in the night. You have wondered in the daytime. You have felt and convenienced in your world because you want to know if it's me. This morning, it is me. It has been me who's been speaking to you over this season for you to trust me, to release your fears and allow my journey with you to take you to places that you've never seen. For you to minister to people you do not know. But remember this. 
Wherever I send you, I go with you. So this morning, take a step of courage. Move out from your seat and declare that you are going to be a servant of the Most High God. I commit my spirit, I commit my son, I commit myself to walk with you, to never forsake you. So this is the day that you should trust and declare, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you're here, and you've been wrestling with God about a ministry calling, I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Young, old, hey guys, how about you? Maybe it's a husband or a wife who goes, man, I, I, how do I tell my husband or wife that? God will take care of that. I still say there's someone else that needs to stand here this morning. Maybe you're on the platform. Is there somebody else? I'm not going to press it. I'm not going to push it. But, Pastor, I, I thank you. <laughs> I was about to tell you, I don't feel comfortable with that young man just stood. I'm going to ask you three to please come to the front. May I do this, or... The three of you who are standing, the four of you who are standing, come to the front. Five, I'm sorry. Six, come on. If you're standing for this. If you can. Now, for those of you who are guests, thank you so much. This is abnormal. Thank you for your patience. Maybe this is your Jericho March Sunday. Where you used to go to church when you were a little kid. And you're like, man, I just want to get saved. Come on down. There's room for you too. So if you don't know Jesus and you want to meet him this morning, we'd love to pray with you about Jesus. But the six of you here, I want to share something with you. Ministry is never easy. Ministry is always light. The greatest thing that I would share with you when I got saved and I got called was honor my pastor whatever my my pastor was the fourth person of the trinity whatever brother johnson said right or wrong i know he did things wrong it didn't matter god called me under him i was going to learn everything i could under him so just put away your inhibitions lean heavily on pastor jamie and pastor tim Allow God to use you, and by the way, wait upon the Lord. He will renew your strength. Don't rush. You're not looking for a platform. You're looking for a pastor. I always see people, when they get called in the ministry, they feel they got to go start a church, and they got to go do this, and, and five years later, they're washing cars. You know why? They didn't wait. Wait. Trust on the timing of the Lord. Timing is more important in ministry than direction. If the timing's off, the process will be flawed, and you won't see the supernatural move of God. But I am so proud of you. Everyone, stretch your hands towards these six, please, and let's commission them. And then you want to take it from here? Raise your hands up front here. I don't know what your ministry will be. Maybe it's nursing home. Maybe it's pulpit. Maybe it, it's going to be uh, being an assistant. Go ahead, jump in. I, want to. I, I just want to bounce off that in the prophetic. I, I feel like so, for some in the room, and maybe you're here, it's, it's, you're familiar with calling, but God's saying, I have a missional shift for you. I have a missional shift for you. He's calling an audible on your life. And you've been all in, maybe. But he said, I'm calling a missional shift. Be ready for the shift. Because he has purpose in the, in the, in the, in the disrupts and he, he has purpose. 
he's calling some, there's a missional shift. Yeah, in fact, I want to ask two or three people to come and stand behind these friends so they know. You never commission alone. You got to have people with you. You just got to have people that you can feel their hand on your back. You got to hear their prayer. You got to know they believe in me. We're going to ask your pastor to anoint you with oil, just like my pastor anointed me. Please, those of you who are still in a mission service, hold on. We're going to do our, our giving in just a moment, but this is the sending. Go ahead, pastor. Begin anointing and stretch your hands this way and pray. Father, pray for their home. I pray, God, that you would help them have revelation knowledge of you, that they will be accepted by their peers and that we will pray for them in the spirit. I pray that you would allow them to sense your leading, your guiding, your direction, the flow. I pray, God, that you would move supernaturally. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray, we lift our hands. Everyone in the building, lift your hands and allow the Shekinah glory of God to fill these people's lives, that they have a moment, a destiny moment that they will remember. Lord, we praise you and we worship you. Lord, we give you all the glory. We have watched the commissioning in our Sunday morning service. We came just thinking it was mission, and God, you had so much more planned than that. Lord, we pray that you would just fill these friends with the fruit of the Spirit. Allow the fruit of the Spirit to be their guide, be their leading. Allow the gifts of the Spirit to be used in their life. And Father, I pray that the motive of the Spirit will be pure of heart. You may be sitting here right now going, you know, I didn't write down enough. I got to scratch it out and write something else down. Go ahead. Just be led of the Spirit. Remember, we're not holding it against you. We're not going to hold you judgment. It's a faith promise. God, I'm going to believe. You, you girls right there. What's going on in your life? Wow. Those of you on the web, we, we love you. God bless you. Have a great night. We're going to go and have service here.
church and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and be Let's stand up on our feet all across the room and sing. whatever you want. That's, that's what this is about. It's, it's about God. I'm, I'm, that's what it, I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. And, and, if, if, and, and whatever you want me to give financially, I'm, I'm yours. Where, wherever you want me to go, I'm yours. How, however you want to use my life, God, I'm, I'm at your disposal. You're the master. He's the master. And we are your servants at your disposal, master. That's what today is really about. And it's in moments like this that God will do this. And young people, listen to me, listen to me. He will make the voice of God a familiar, recognizable voice. Because you'll hear the patterns and you'll sit, you'll, you'll begin to know, okay, that's the Lord. That's the Lord. I didn't know it at first. Just like, was it Samuel? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know at first. But, but now I'm learning. Now I'm learning. I'm learning. And now, now next time I'll know. Next time I'll know and I'll become more and more able to discern. So there's an awakening of ears this morning in our hearts to hear what God sounds like. Uh, You all know me. I'm 74 years old. You're 74? I'm 74. I didn't know that. When I was a 15-year-old little girl, a missionary came to my church. And I remember walking home with my mama. I said, Mama, I'm going to see the world and I'm going to see souls saved. 
I'm going to be a missionary. All hell broke out. The enemy knew me, and he knew what I was capable of. And he ran after me. I'm seven. I don't know what God has planned for me. I don't know what that looks like. But I know that I know that I know today I was commissioned to be a missionary. And that I know that I know that I know you're going to run with me. I don't know what that's going to look like. Don't, but you're going to run with me. I can remember sitting in pastor's office, and the Holy Spirit told me at the beginning of this year that my destiny was tied to Life Church. I told him I can't leave here. I can't go anywhere. God says, right here, your destiny is tied to Life Church. And he even said to me at that time, have you ever thought about the young women running with you? I don't know what it's going to look like, but I know in my heart something happened today. I don't know who, I don't know where, but we're going to run. And it might be dark, and it might be scary, but I know what God has put into me is such boldness and courage I have never felt in my entire life. I'm 74, so I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying. I don't know what it's going to look like, but we're going to run. Don't know where. It might be right here, right here. God's going to open doors. God's going to open doors. I love you. I'm excited. Thank you. If you're a young, stand down there. If you're a young lady and you say something, God just did something, I want to run with you, Candy. I I want you to gather around her. Say, I want to run with you. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what it means. I want to run with you. I want, I want you to pour your life into me. I want, if, if that's you, you're, I don't know the definition of young, but if that's you and you want to run with her, I want you to gather around her. We're seizing the moment. We're seizing the moment. We're seizing the moment. Now, don't come if you're not serious. Don't come if you're not serious. Don't come if you're not ready to lay your life down for the cause of Christ. I don't know what it's going to look like, Candy. I affirm in my spirit what you just said, and they're going to run with you. They're going to run with you. Hey, Candy, you're going to teach them. You're going to teach them how to run. You're going to teach them how to run. I prophesy that you will teach runners how to run. You will teach young women how to run. You will teach them how to run faster and further because of what I poured into you, says the Lord. I want you to gather around this Candy. That's you. Step forward, Candy. So they can step forward. Step forward. Come, come up a couple steps. Candy. Candy, come up some steps. Gather around her. And I want you to lay hands and pray for her right now. Go, 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 go. Pray for her. Pray for her. Pray for her. Ladies, pray for her. Pray for her. There's a divine suddenly there's something supernatural is happening. Lay hands on her and pray for her. Pray for Candy. Men, men, we're, we're running together. Men of the church, we've got three men's groups that are launching next week. Three men's groups. How God made how God makes men three men's groups three opportunities Sunday morning before church Sunday afternoon and Wednesday night I want you to seize the opportunity we got a team of men that have been praying for you for three months they're ready to pour into you they're ready to love you they're ready to run with you Stretch your hand this way for a moment. Stretch your hand towards these young ladies. Jesus, the model, 
the younger will learn from the older. The seasoned anointing and mantle will be passed to the younger when they chase, when they chase it. When they chase it, it'll be passed to them. God, I pray they would chase you. They would chase you. They would chase you together, Jesus. They would chase you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. I pray for the prophetic voice in our young ladies to rise. I pray for voices that have been squelched to be amplified in the name of Jesus. I pray for compassion ministries to rise up out of our young woman. I pray for healing ministries to rise up out of our young women. I prophesy healing ministries in the name of Jesus. Physical healing and inner healing in the name of Jesus. Raise them up, Lord. Raise them up for your glory, Jesus. Raise them up for your glory, Jesus. haven't told him recently, would you just tell him, God, I'm yours, Lord. I'm, 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 for, I'm for your use. In my school, in my workplace, in my office, in, in my police car, in the job site, in my home, in my classroom, in the field as I work, I'm yours. Mananaya, Mananaya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Waters are stirring. I, I want to do one more thing for my friend, and I don't want to embarrass anybody, but um, Dana in the sound booth, are you still back there, brother? Would you come? I want to pray for you right now. Vanessa, would you come down here? Waters are stirring. You know I love you, and I know you've been to hell and back. It's been hard, man. Lord, wants you to know he loves you, man. He just loves you. He loves you. He wants you just to sense his love for you. Just take a big breath, man. Jesus, I pray for my friend. You said we're to pray and not give up. Pray and not give up. And then we prayed a thousand times for you to touch his body. We prayed you would touch his neck and his back and his God. We, we prayed all those things. But you said to pray and not give up. And so God, I pray one more time for my friend that you would do a work that you would do a restoration work God things in his body that have just gone awry and that just out of alignment and pinched nerves and God in the name of Jesus 
in the name of Jesus. Bring healing. Bring healing. Bring healing, Jesus. Bring healing to his shoulders, to his neck, God, to his head, God, his chest, or his hips and knees, legs, and to his wrist in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rick Allen, would you come help us? Jesus, I'm on our name. Jesus. Jesus, would you bring a healing? Jesus, Father would God, you in Jesus' name, we Jesus. pray for divine healing. No Jesus. weapon formed against you can prosper. Jesus. Every tongue that raises up against you shall be condemned. I'm going down, I'm going down. Father, I ask that you would bring physical healing and that you would bring emotional joy. Jesus. That the days and the weeks and the months and the years have just now put such a, it's just put such a burden into his emotional being that, Lord, he struggles to call on you. He wonders, what's the use? I'll just walk like this. Father, I ask now in the name of Jesus. Our Messiah, our healer, our comforter. That over the next seven days that he will see Jesus. Healing. He will see restoration of his emotions. He will see excitement and joy in his spirit. And that Lord, you will give him the preparation for the providence of the miracle. Prepare his way, for you're going to do a mighty work. In Jesus' name. everybody let me share something with you for those of you who are seeking a healing and haven't been healed if you're seeking a miracle and it hasn't been delivered if you're seeking emotional guidance or a financial windfall and it hasn't happened I want to give you a, a, a word that has been raiment to my wife and I and it is this faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things yet not seen faith is a confident belief in the principles. The principles of the word, the principles of your marriage, the principles of life. That's what you put your faith in. Faith is a confident belief of principles in the, in the anxious expectation. Hope is an anxious expectation. And we were going through a time in our church where our church was, they thought we were battling faith only to find out we were fighting hope. We were fighting the anxious expectations, not the confident belief of principles. We were solid on the healing. We were having a hard time believing on the anxious expectation. And we had to change our whole focus to our battle is our hope. But if our hope is secure in Christ, the anxious expectations of God doing something in my life changes my faith. And if he doesn't heal you today, tomorrow, this is my day. Because the moment you lose your anxious expectation, your faith becomes neutralized. So, have hope. Your faith is solid. You love your wife. You, you have faith in your family. You have faith in Christ. You have faith in Tim. You have faith in everything. But the problem is, I don't know who to tell my hope is gone. Who do I tell that I just struggle? that just not clicking, man. Well, God heard you. And he wants you to know hope's on the way. Did you hear me? 
Hope's on the way. The anxious expectation's on the way. The worship team's going to continue to play. If you'd like prayer for anything you haven't received prayer for, Rick and I will be down here. Prayer team will be down here. I'm going to pray a blessing over you. Our ushers will be at the door to receive your connection cards and your prayer request, your offering, and your faith promise cards. What this means is, by faith, if God will run it through me, I'll give it. No one's going to chase you down, knock on your door, and tell you, you know, ask you where your money is. It's not. It's about believing. God, if you can run it through me, I'll, I'll run it. To, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. of the offering today is going towards this. So if you're at home, throw that back up there. You can email Faith Commitment there. You can give online. You can give today. If you're like me, I don't, well, I've got a little bit of cash, but I don't really carry much cash. I don't really write a check that often. Go home, give digitally, and next week we'll report to you what happened. God's stirring something. I love you. Life track's going to start right after Right after this, they have lunch for you and ready to go. Hope to see you back tonight at 5 o'clock for our supper, bowl, party. The church will supply drinks, cups, plates, napkins, etc. Let's bring some snack foods. We'll have some fun together at 5 o'clock. Father, I pray blessing of your people. I pray that you give them increase. Increase wisdom. Increase favor. Increase capacity. Increase hearing. And increase strength to go and to run. I pray, God, that you would, God, you would bless us so that we could be a blessing. God, you would bless us with more gifts and more talents and more treasure so that we could be a blessing. God, help us to be faithful stewards, and I pray that we would be marked. God, we would be marked by you and your presence, and God, as we give ourselves to you today, Lord, I pray that we would be reminded that no matter where we go, you are with us. So I pray the blessing of promise of presence over your people. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious.